It was a Saturday morning when I decided to embark on a new adventure. Friday night's compliments were ringing in my ear. I had followed BuzzFeed Tasty's fifth recipe from a seven minute video. How to cook perfect pasta. And I had successfully fabricated a meal that closely resembled my family's definition of perfect. So I thought to myself, if I could really cook the perfect pasta, I could cook anything. I was unstoppable. So that Saturday morning, I decided to look up one of Tasty's much more popular videos. This one has 15 million views. How to make perfect chocolate chip cookies. And I began stirring and mixing and blending and stirring again. And I proudly put my concoction into the oven. A few minutes later, I ended up with a pile of brown bricks and a fire alarm set off in the building and all my neighbors running downstairs to see what was happening. So much for making the perfect cookies. And I'm a big fan of tasty BuzzFeed, but I need to ask them this. Why make the perfect cookies if you could just make good cookies? Why make the perfect pasta if you could just make delicious pasta? Is perfection actually necessary in these aspects? Ladies and gentlemen, this is what humanity's interests have reduced to. Raise your hands honestly. Have any of you in this room seen an article about using those burnt chocolate chip cookies to make the best crust for a cheesecake? Exactly. I do not stand here before all of you with the intent to deliver yet another pretentious talk about loving yourself and about how everything you do is amazing and how you should respect that. This is TEDx, not the Tumblr inspiration tag. I am here, in fact, to remind you of the true reality of life. Perfection is an unattainable illusion. It is so harshly impressionistic and doesn't leave any room for the acknowledgement of the beautiful process of making mistakes and learning from them. So I was writing this speech a few days ago, and I realized that I was desperately searching for synonyms for the word good in my head. Excellent, splendid, outstanding, marvelous, fantastic, whatnot. And I kept editing and editing until I was satisfied. I first thought that this was a general activity that people who write speeches engage in. But then I contemplated my actions as a whole and finally came to a conclusion. We, as a society, have undermined the value of the word good so much that we are not satisfied with using just that. We can only rest when we find the superlatives. And this directly gives us a distinct reflection of our world. Our society puts so much emphasis on being the best to present ourselves as the most perfect versions of ourselves that we can be. We tend to hold perfectionism up as a decorated emblem signifying worth. It is the first thing that comes to your mind during an interview. Oh, my weakness. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. And you think that you've successfully turned your weakness into an indirect strength and give yourself a pat on the back. Perfection is something that is enviable, but society fails to acknowledge the fact that it is but a myth. With the rise of social media, our worth is questioned every millisecond of the day. One in three young people is affected by socially prescribed perfectionism. And yes, this may seem like a repetitive topic, but it's 100% true. You are now defined by your follower count. It's about how many Snapchat stories you post in a day. It's about how many likes you received on that post last night. And you know how you can put filters on different pictures that you post on social media? Well, it doesn't just end there. Social media does not only offer filters. Social media is a filter. It is a filter, a painted surreal castle in the air, a Venus flytrap waiting for its next prey. It portrays people as the epitome of perfection, leading wonderful lives of their own. Except, of course, your aunt, who posts a selfie every day with the caption, hashtag no filter, 
In the background, you can literally see the pots overflowing with soup and her daughter running late for school. The people who have the courage to do that, they are living their best life. But in all seriousness, perfectionism is not only a nationwide syndrome, it is an epidemic. Yes, it is the quality of a good student to score well, but is it really acceptable for that student to cry over the one mark that he lost instead of being happy about the other 99 marks that he earned? It seems as though a trend has been set. If one of your teeth is crooked, you straight away go to the dentist and get braces done for you and wear them for two years. Well, let me tell you something. I have a tooth that's completely slanting and one that's got the front side facing the back and the back side facing the front. No, please don't stare at my teeth. And yes, I'll admit, I try to hide my lower set of teeth when I'm posing for a picture. And I get a lot of pressure to get teeth correctors, and I don't want to. Although I think it's inevitable, but I couldn't care less. Because out of my 32 teeth, if you judge me for the two crooked ones and completely ignore the other 30, let it be that way. But what intrigues me is that it is actually the minor things that society cares about. It's that one mustache that you shaved unevenly. It's that one strand of hair sticking out from your Dutch braid. It's that one note that you sang off key. It's that little bit of extra sugar that you added into your apple pie. And it's that one sentence that you forgot while delivering your speech. It seems as though in a futuristic society, although this may seem practically impossible, if there was an impending hurricane, people wouldn't run out for their lives. They would still idiosyncratically stay at home and try to iron that one little crease on their shirt. So what I'm trying to say is, perfection doesn't exist. Yes, I may have reached the part of my talk when I start to impersonate the Tumblr inspiration tag, but it's true. Be so completely yourself that you inspire everyone else around you to be completely themselves, too. True success can only be achieved when you develop a mindset that is capable of accepting these imperfections and embracing them so that you can be open to judgment. So ladies and gentlemen, if you can carry a tune but do not have a melodious voice, it's completely all right. Please sing. If stick figures help you get through art class, draw them. If you have a vast imagination but cannot express it, just pick up the pen. And if you can dance but cannot follow choreography for the life of you, just dance freely to your heart's content. These imperfections are what make you complete. Develop your mediocre talents. Enjoy your life, make the most of it, and don't waste your years regretting and being afraid. Coming back to that Saturday morning, I baked a second batch of cookies. Some were undercooked, some overcooked, and some in the middle, but they seemed perfect to me. And I gave them all to my family, and even though I got a few raised eyebrows in disapproval, I baked a third batch, and maybe ate all of them up at once, but no one needs to know about that. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope that the talk that I've delivered today is close to what a perfect speech would have been like in my head. Thank you for your time. <laughs>